Yes, I'm crazy. If you haven't figured that out yet, you'll soon know. Okay, anyways, guys, um, this is Adam Lushville 13, and um, coming back for another video. Um, uh, if you've watched my other videos, I'm not real sure what I want to do with this channel. Um, one thing that I have wanted to get in mass media, I guess you could say, because a lot of the students I've taught, which I don't teach guitar students anymore, but I have taught a couple. One thing that I see a lot, and it's a lot with people that I watch play, people I've jammed with and everything, is, it might just be this area, but a lot of people don't take advantage of learning a couple of patterns which I'll show you guys the patterns. The first pattern today is going to be force. Um, now, why a guitar player would want to use force? Well, the instrument is tuned in force. There's a reason why that it's not tuned C, D, E, G, A, B, or whatever, whatever way you want to tune it. And I'll show you in a later video why dropping the E string to a D makes everything so much simpler for some metal musics and changes the timbre and stuff. Um, but anyways, a little bit of background. I didn't use this when I first started playing. I didn't even know it existed. I never thought of that. And I started taking lessons off the doctor at a, uh, a, a guy, that, a, a professor that had a doctorate on his um, instrument. Sorry, my ear itches. That had a, per an, a doctorate on his instrument. And, well... Doctorate in theory and composition, composition, but he was a heck of a guitar player um, who taught me a lot. And I once was going to be a music major, and it might still happen. Doesn't look good, but it might happen. Um, and what he presented me with was thinking force. Because once you see what I'm talking about and start to understand it, you'll um, it'll make sense. You can use this with the cage system. I don't ever call this stuff the cage system, which the cage system works and from what I've seen of it, but I'm not familiar with it. So you might want to think twice about asking me something about the cage system because I use it somewhat, but I use a lot of just memorize the notes, to be honest. Um, just memorize where stuff is is literally what I do. Um, anyways. Thinking in force. If you have a chromatic scale, whew, I'm awful with the camera. Forgive me. Okay. If you have a chromatic scale, as you can see there, you got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. The E and the B does not have sharps. Uh, I don't care what people say. They do not have sharps, um, technically. Now there is some um, stuff where you can call it something else, but just for us today, you can uh, just forget about them having sharps. Okay, now anyways, this is the chromatic scale, 12 notes as you see. All right, now thinking in fours, if um, let's say for simplistic value here, if I'm on C and I want to go to the fourth, if you look, if you count, C, then D, then E, then F. Just going off of whole steps here, ignoring the sharps. That's going to give you an F. Now, something that screws people up when they start thinking like this. Let me put my light back. There we go. Um, something that screws people up when they think this is they don't count C as one of those intervals that they're counting. Always count your note, your first note as your first interval. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with G, and that's going to be a fifth instead of a fourth. Now, what's nice about this, as I promised I'd show you, if we look at E, which is in the about center of the page. Screwed up on writing this. Sorry about my bad writing. But if you look at it, and you go E, F, G, A. A is our fourth. What is that? That's our second string. And the note we started on is our first string. Okay? Going from E to A, if you count it, it goes to D. D goes to G. Now here is where it screws up, and that's why 
people like Alex McCutcheon and uh, Rob Chappers did it for a while there when I was watching him, tuned to what they call the perfect fourth, which is they tune the two the two high the high E and the high B. They change those to um, I think a C and an F. I have it, guys. I'll tell you. Yeah, a C and an F. Sorry, I had to reference myself there. Um, but what happens is the B turns into a major third. If you know your keys, you know why, what I'm talking about. For today, just think of it, just count up three. Um, because what it is, is the major third is the actual third of the scale, the major form of the scale. So if you have a G major, you're going to be going to the major third of the scale, which is B, 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 B. Okay, uh, well, duh, duh, okay, see, I have to even reference myself sometimes. So I'm not perfect, so don't consider me perfect. Um, what, there's no real, I've never really heard a reason for why the guitar is tuned with a major third right in the middle and then going back to fourths. I've never heard why that is. Uh, some things I have heard people elaborate on why it is, is it makes it easier to make some chords. And it makes it easier so that you don't have harder scales. But from what I've seen, the fourth, the perfect fourth thing is not that hard at all to uh, write the scales. But if you're stuck in thinking like this, that's, that's what the problem is. Um, so basically what this video is telling you today, um, in a summary here, um, on your, all your strings except for the B string, if you're dropping a string, you're going to be going um, up a fourth, which if you learn the intervals quickly, which you will, if you practice this, you'll learn it really quickly. Just like if you practice scales, you're going to learn the scales quickly. Um, you'll, uh, you'll see. You'll understand it. Um, if you're on the B and you drop or the G and you drop down, you're going to be dropping down a major third, or dropping up a major third. Sorry, or coming up a major third. Wow, I'm messing this up. But there's your tuning. Okay, and that is that's basically it. Um, the only thing else I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know if this is going to look good on camera or not, so please forgive me. There is a friend of mine who is a singer. She's a singer, and she's really good. I did choir with her, and as you guys will soon find out, my voice is awful, but um, she was actually really good, and she's she's uh, doing the two YouTube road as well as I am. So her name is Kenzie Cole 92 Check her out. I'll put a link in the description box and thanks guys comment if you like subscribe if you like um, if you got any more questions send me a question if it's a mass question I'm gonna answer it in a video so watch for the videos it might be best to subscribe if you got a question like that that you think it's gonna be a mass question um, and until next time peace